So how does the Earth's iron core create and maintain a magnetic field? Normally, when you heat an iron magnet above about 700 degrees centigrade, you actually destroy its magnetic field. The Earth's core is far hotter than that, so surely it shouldn't actually be able to create a magnetic field in the first place. This is actually down to how magnets work. In a magnet, what's actually going on is the atoms within it actually line up in the same direction, creating a magnet. You could actually envisage this like electricity flowing down the magnet, and upon reaching the end, they're pushed out and unable to float back down into the magnet. They have to find another way to the opposite end, creating the magnetic field. When you heat a magnet, this alignment of the atoms break down, and the atoms within it all start pointing in random directions, so the magnetic field breaks down. If, however, you could stir the molten iron so that the large proportion of the item atoms were all actually pointing in the same direction, you would actually create a magnetic field. And it's this stirring which actually happens within the Earth itself. There's an effect called the Coriolis effect, which also happens within the Earth's oceans, and it's the motion of the Earth which creates these swirling currents within a liquid, as the rotation of the Earth maintains these in motion. Like the Earth's oceans, these currents are relatively stable and predictable, and since the motion that's created them is also stable and predictable. There, however, just isn't just one current in the Earth's core, but many, and in the general these do align with each other, and since they're all caused by the same overall force. However, occasionally these currents interact with each other, and this can mean that some weaken and some strengthen. This means that in different parts of the Earth, the magnetic force may be stronger than others. In parts of the Earth, the magnetic force actually may actually change over time. This also means the precise location of north and south poles moves with, over time, but normally only for a few miles each time.